Ireland is famous for fiery red hair, freckled skin, and pale blue eyes. But what if I told you there's another Irish face just as real, but far less talked about? Jet black hair, piercing light eyes, and skin so fair it almost glows. For centuries, people have whispered about them, calling them the Black Irish. Spanish sailors from the wrecked armada of 1588, Viking raiders who left their mark along Irish coasts, maybe Norman knights who conquered and stayed. But modern DNA research tells a completely different story, one that's far stranger than the myths. The truth hidden in Irish chromosomes reveals that this isn't about one shipwreck or invasion. It's about a 4,000-year genetic mystery that explains why Ireland has the world's highest rates of red hair, certain diseases, and this haunting dark-haired phenotype all in one small island. This is how history lives in our blood, and why identity is never as simple as stereotypes suggest. Let's start with the romantic stories that everyone knows. In 1588, the mighty Spanish Armada was smashed by storms off Ireland's coast. Dozens of ships sank, and dark-haired, olive-skinned survivors supposedly staggered onto Irish shores, fell in love, and passed down their Mediterranean looks through the centuries. It's a beautiful story. It's also genetically impossible. Modern DNA studies show no measurable Spanish genetic signal from that time period. The few sailors who survived couldn't possibly change Ireland's population on a national scale. We're talking about maybe a few hundred men scattered across an entire country. What about the Vikings? From the 9th to 11th centuries, Norse raiders founded Dublin and settled throughout Ireland. They did leave a genetic mark. About 6% of Irishmen carry Scandinavian Y chromosome lineages. But here's the problem. This Viking influence is strongest in Eastern Ireland, not the Western counties where the Black Irish look is most commonly seen. The Normans, same story. These 12th century Anglo-Norman knights conquered castles and married into noble families, but their genetic footprint is surprisingly shallow and mostly confined to aristocratic bloodlines in Eastern Ireland. So if Spanish sailors, Viking warriors, and Norman knights can't explain the Black Irish mystery, what can? The answer forces us to travel much deeper into the past, 4,000 years deeper, to when Ireland's entire population was rewritten in one of the most dramatic genetic upheavals in human history. To understand the Black Irish, we need to go back to around 2500 BC, when stone circles rose on Irish hillsides and metal first gleamed in ancient hands. This was the Bronze Age, and it brought a shockwave so powerful it reshaped Ireland's DNA forever. Before this time, Ireland was home to Neolithic farmers whose ancestors had sailed from the Mediterranean thousands of years earlier. These early, farmers carried diverse paternal lineages and had lived on the island for millennia. But then came the Beaker culture, a mysterious group spreading across Europe with advanced metalwork, distinctive pottery, and most importantly, their DNA. When the Beaker people arrived in Britain and Ireland, they didn't just blend in. They replaced almost 90% of the existing population in just a few centuries. This isn't speculation, it's written in ancient bones. On Rathlin Island off Ireland's north coast, scientists uncovered the remains of three Bronze Age men buried around 2000 BC. When their DNA was sequenced, all three carried the R1B L21 Y chromosome lineage, the same paternal signature found in over 65% of Irish men today. It was like looking directly at the genetic fathers of modern Ireland. Even more remarkable, these ancient men carried the gene for lactase persistence, the ability to digest milk as adults. In most of the ancient world, people lost this ability after childhood. But in Ireland, it became one of the most common traits on Earth. In a land where dairy became essential for survival, this gene was life or death. The Beaker newcomers also carried genes for lighter skin and eye pigmentation. But here's the crucial twist. Even as these lighter traits spread, the genes for dark hair persisted and flourished in certain communities. Think about that. The same Bronze Age revolution that turned Ireland into a nation of milk drinkers and reshaped its entire population also planted the genetic seeds for two extremes fiery red hair on one side, jet black hair on the other. Ireland rolled both sides of the genetic dice. 
We've traced the fathers through Y chromosomes, but the mothers tell an equally fascinating story through mitochondrial DNA passed only from mother to child. The most common maternal lineage in Ireland today is haplogroup H, carried by about 38% of Irish women. These lineages trace back to Europe's earliest farmers and Bronze Age migrants, linking modern families directly to prehistoric ancestors. But roughly 13% of Irish women carry haplogroup U, one of the oldest maternal lineages in Europe. A branch called U5 connects modern Irish women to the first people who set foot on the island after the Ice Age. Hunter-gatherers who lived along Ireland's wild coasts more than 7,000 years ago. Here's what's fascinating. Many of these maternal lineages show their closest matches not to Britain, but to France, Iberia, and the wider Atlantic coast. This suggests ancient seafaring connections, maritime highways of prehistory that carried entire families into Ireland long before any recorded invasions. These maternal haplogroups carried pigmentation variants that allowed darker hair to persist even as lighter traits spread. Combined with the paternal lineages, they created the genetic mix that made the black Irish look possible. A genetic lottery that could produce red hair and black hair within the same family. If you want to see the black Irish face today, you go west to Kerry, Cork, Galway. Lands of stone walls, rugged cliffs, and families who've lived in the same valleys for generations. Modern genetics confirms what folklore long suspected. The west of Ireland is genetically different. The 2017 Irish DNA Atlas project analyzed people whose grandparents were all from the same Irish regions. Instead of one homogeneous population, they found 10 distinct genetic clusters. The most distinctive, most ancient clusters were in the west. Counties like Kerry and Cork showed the closest continuity with Bronze Age Ireland. These Western populations had minimal Viking, Norman, or later British influence. While most Irish carry about 7% Norwegian-like ancestry from Viking times, Western clusters often had far less. They remained genetically closer to their Bronze Age ancestors. This created what scientists call founder effects. When populations become isolated, Rare traits can survive and even flourish. In Western Ireland, those rare pigmentation genes, dark hair combined with pale skin and light eyes, found the perfect environment to persist across millennia. Here's where the story gets truly remarkable. Ireland is world famous for having the highest percentage of red hair on Earth, about 10% of the population. But the same genetic mechanisms that create redheads also explain the Black Irish mystery. The key player is the MC1R gene. Variants, like R151C, boost the chances of red hair and freckles, and they're incredibly common in Ireland. But pigmentation works like a genetic tug of war between melanin production, which makes hair dark, and mutations that block that melanin. Someone can carry red hair genes but still have jet black hair if they inherit strong dark hair variants. This genetic push and pull explains how the same Irish family can produce flaming redheads and their raven-haired siblings. Ancient DNA shows these darker pigmentation variants have been in Ireland since Neolithic times. Farmers from the Mediterranean carried them thousands of years ago. When Bronze Age migrations introduced lighter skin genes, the systems clashed, creating Ireland's unique spectrum of looks. The Black Irish phenotype isn't about foreign invasion. It's the product of a genetic balancing act that started over 4,000 years ago and never stopped. Irish surnames aren't just names, they're genetic roadmaps. Take the Ue Nail dynasty, legendary descendants of Nile of the Nine hostages. Genetic studies show around 20% of men in Northwest Ireland share the same Y chromosome lineage, likely descended from this ruling family. And where is this cluster strongest? The West and Northwest exactly where the Black Irish look is most common. The O'Brien surname tells a more complex story. When researchers tested men with this name, they found not one lineage, but a patchwork, some tied to ancient Gaelic dynasties, others to Norse settlers, even some with English roots. It proves that even within single surnames, Ireland's history of mixing and survival runs deep. This genetic complexity within family names shows how ruling dynasties could spread their DNA widely through political dominance, sometimes preserving 
the very traits we associate with the black Irish appearance. Ireland's story was also shaped by devastating population collapses that acted as genetic filters. The Great Famine of 1845-1852 was the most catastrophic. Ireland's population plummeted from 8 million to 4 million through death and emigration. Entire villages vanished. This harsh mathematics of survival meant the DNA of those who endured became amplified. In Western Ireland, where isolation already protected certain traits, the famine acted like a genetic bottleneck. Communities that survived carried forward the unusual pigmentation genes contributing to the black Irish appearance. But tragedy and genetics intertwined in other ways too. Ireland carries unique genetic burdens that may have once provided survival advantages. The C282Y variant linked to hereditary hemochromatosis, sometimes called the Celtic curse, causes excess iron storage. Today it can be dangerous, but when diets were poor and iron scarce, it may have been life-saving. Geneticists compare this to sickle cell trait in Africa. Just as carrying one sickle cell gene protects against malaria, carrying one hemochromatosis variant may have helped the Irish survive famine and nutritional stress. Today's advanced genomics can track exactly when foreign genes entered Ireland, and the results align with history but with surprising twists. The data shows Viking influence around 1000 AD, Norman signatures around 1170 AD, and plantation-era British genes between 1600 and 1700 AD. But here's the crucial finding. While Eastern Ireland shows layers of Viking, Norman, and English influence, the Western counties stayed remarkably close to their Bronze Age genetic foundation. That's why Kerry, Cork, and Galway remain the strongholds of the Black Irish look. They're the regions least diluted by later arrivals. Analysis of Ireland's full genetic makeup reveals a stable three-way mix that's persisted for nearly 4,000 years. About 30% from Western hunter-gatherers, 40% from early European farmers, and 30% from steppe pastoralists, whose arrival triggered the Bronze Age Revolution. The Black Irish story isn't just about looks. It's about how myths shape identity and how DNA links past to present. For centuries, Irish identity was painted in broad stereotypes. The fiery redhead with freckles, the pale farmer with blue eyes. But the Black Irish remind us that Ireland was always more complex and diverse than cliches suggest. This genetic diversity extends to health patterns. Ireland has the world's highest frequency of cystic fibrosis, elevated rates of multiple sclerosis, and metabolic disorders tied to genes that once provided famine resistance. The same population history that produced the Black Irish also shaped these modern medical realities. But here's the deeper truth. Behind every Irish face lies a story of Bronze Age migrations, medieval invasions, and famine survivors who carried their DNA through centuries of hardship. To look at an Irish face, whether red-haired or black-haired, is to see not just features, but history itself. The Black Irish aren't a myth from the Spanish Armada or a footnote of Viking conquest. They're living proof that identity is built from thousands of years of change, chance, and resilience. They show us that there's no single way to look Irish, that heritage is far richer, stranger, and more mysterious than any stereotype. The Black Irish prove that the most compelling stories aren't always the ones we tell ourselves. Sometimes, they're the ones written in our blood, waiting for science to decode their secrets.